Okay, guys, I had a senior moment there for a sec, so let's start where we picked up. Just a quick review. We had, we had a situation where we wanted to know what's the probability of both speaker and recorder being girls? Well, I circled them, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, six out of the 12 possibilities, right? Then we talked about what's the probability of a girl being the speaker? Well, we looked at, okay, well, there's three girls and one boy, so the probability of a girl being a speaker is three out of four. Now, here's the one I had my senior moment about. What's the probability that the, a girl is a recorder given that we already picked a girl as a speaker? Well, if that's the case, we gotta cross out anything where the boy was the speaker. So now our all part of our fraction, our total sample space, is now nine instead of six, 12, right? These, all three of these are not in the cards anymore. So now we still have six possible outcomes for a girl being the recorder, but instead of out of 12, it's now out of nine. So is it true that 6 over 12 equals 3 over 4 times 6 over 9? Well, let's see. 6 over 12 is 1 half. 3 over 4 times, this reduces to 2 thirds. Is that a true statement? Well, 1 over 2 does equal 6 over 12. So yes, we have proven that those are dependent events. Okay, guys, let's move our way over here. Okay, now we're going to mix it up a little. We're going to use our common sense to determine whether the events are independent or dependent, and then we are going to use the appropriate formula to find the probability. So let's look at a situation with a spinner, right? We've got a spinner, eight sections that are all the same size. So let's say we're gonna spin it twice, and we wanna find the probability that we're gonna spin a five on the first spin and a number greater than three on the second spin. So let's think about this common sensely. Are those spins, if I spin a five on the first spin, is that going to impact my likelihood of spinning a number greater than three on the second spin? And the answer is no, because they're independent spins. So we're going to say our common sense tells us these are independent. So our formula is going to be probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, now I just chose spinning a 5 on the first spin is A and spinning a number greater than 3 on the second spin is B. So what's the probability of spinning a 5 then a number greater than 3? Well, it's equal to the probability of spinning a five times the probability of spinning a number greater than three. So the probability of spinning a five is just one out of eight, right guys? Right, because you spin a five, that's one out of eight chance. What about a number greater than three? Well, let's see the numbers greater than three. One, two, three, four, five out of eight. And since we know those are independent, we know that our probability of spinning a 5 and a number greater than 3 on two spins is going to be 5 over 64. And if we want to look at that as a percent, it's 0 0.078, which is 7.8%. Those are all correct. Okay, what about this next one? A bag contains 20 $1 bills and 5 $100 bills. So how many total bills are there, guys? There are 25 total bills. That's our sample space. You randomly select two bills to buy a gift card for your friend. What's the probability that you draw a $100 bill both times? Okay, let's use our common sense. Is, are these events going to be dependent or independent? So if I take, let's say I choose a $100 bill on the first draw. Does that change the likelihood that I'm going to draw a $100 bill on the second draw? Well, yes, right? Because now I've taken that $100 bill out and there aren't as many $100 bills in there, right? And there's also one fewer bill in the bag. So these are going to be dependent events. 
So let's look at our formula, which says the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has happened already. So let's put this in our scenario. Probability of both 100 equals probability of 100 first times the probability of 100 second given that 100 is first. Sorry, I don't leave myself an effort. Okay, what's the probability of choosing a $100 bill? Well, let's look. We have 25 bills, and five of them are hundreds. So my probability of choosing a $100 bill on the first go is 5 over 25, or one fifth. Okay, I've taken that $100 bill, it's no longer in the bag. So what about the second one? What's the probability of choosing 100 second given that we already chose 100 first? Well, now there's only $400 bills, four $100 bills in there, and now there are only 24 bills because we took the first 100. So the probability of that is 1 out of 6. So that means that the probability of two $100 bills is equal to 1 fifth times 1 sixth, which is 1 out of 30, which is not very likely, unfortunately. So chances are you're not going to be buying your friend a $200 gift card. Okay, last one. Okay, guys, I've got a rand, I'm choosing randomly from a standard deck of cards. Now, those of you who aren't sure what a standard deck of cards looks like, there are four suits. There are hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. I'm terrible at drawing spades. Okay, so they want to know what is the probability of choosing a heart, all three cards are hearts, right? So there are four suits and there are 13 of each suit. So I'm gonna draw three different cards. What is the probability that all four of them, or sorry, that all three of them are hearts? Well, the probability of all hearts is equal to the probability heart on the first times the probability of heart on the second times the probability of heart on the third, right? And that's because if I put the card, they're telling me I'm gonna put the card back. So I'm gonna replace the card, right, each time and then draw it again. So it means that I'm just, each draw is separate. So the probability of all hearts, well, what's the probability of choosing a heart on the very first draw? Well, there are four suits, and that means one-fourth of them are hearts. And the same thing here, because I'm putting the cards back, then I know that each time I'm getting the same probability of drawing a heart. So my probability, if I put the cards back, is one out of 64. Now this shows up on the SAT and the ACT a lot. What if each time I draw a card, I don't put it back, right? That's a different scenario. So if I want the probability here, this, these are gonna be dependent events because each time I'm gonna put, I'm gonna not put the card back, right? I'm gonna take the card away from the whole stack. So the probability of all hearts Right? Well, let's look at the probability of the hearts on the first one. Okay? Well, the probability of getting a heart on the first one is 13 out of 52, which is one fourth. But now look, guys, let's say I chose the, I already picked a heart. Now there's not gonna be 
one of the hearts is gone. So now I'm only going to have 12 hearts and 51 hearts. Right? Now what about a heart on the third one? Well, now I've taken two hearts. Right? So now I'm going to have 11 out of 50. I'm hoping that makes sense, right? Because I'm not putting the cards back there, right? I'm doing 13 out of 52, then I'm taking a heart, so now I only have 12 out of 51, and now I'm taking another house heart, so I only have 11 out of 50. So here I get 11 out of 850. That's my probability of getting all three hearts when I'm not replacing the cards, right? Now this translates to 0.0156, and this translates to 0.013, and it makes sense that it's gonna be slightly less likely to get three hearts if I'm not putting them back. Okay guys, here is the end of the lesson. We are gonna use common sense and this table to fill out these probabilities. So here we've got a preschool enrollment. We've got 90 kids. Some of them are one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, and four-year-old, and there are females and males. And then we've got totals along the outside. So first thing I want to do, these should go really quickly. The first thing I want to do is find the probability that any random student I choose is female. Well, there's 39 females out of 90 students. And I'm just going to reduce these for you guys. That turns into 13 over 30. The probability of being male, well, there's 51 males out of 90, which gives me 17 out of 30. Okay, the probability of being one year old, I've got 31 year olds. So that gives me one third. The probability of being two years old, right? I got the probability of being three year old, and the probability of being four years old. This is a really weird preschool because usually the kids are not one and two. Maybe it's a daycare instead. Okay, and that equals 8 over 45. Okay, that was the boring part. Now the interesting part. What is the probability of being both female and 3? Or in other words, the probability of being a 3-year-old female. Well, let's look. 3-year-old females, there are 8 3-year-old females out of a total of 90 students. Okay, is probability of being female and three the same thing as prob probability of being female given that you're three? Definitely not. This means we are only considering the three-year-olds, right? So let's just look at the three-year-olds. We've got 18 three-year-olds. What's the probability of being, of being three years old, sorry, female given that you're a three-year-old? Well, eight out of 18. Is that going to be the same thing as being a three-year-old given that you're female? No, right? Because now I'm looking for three-year-olds out of only the females. So eight out of 39, right? So this given thing is changing the denominator of my fraction. Okay, guys, let's try it with male and four. What's the probability of being a four-year-old male? Well, there are nine four-year-old males out of all the students. Okay, what's the probability of being a male given that you're four years old? Well, now we're only looking at the four-year-olds. There are 16 four-year-olds, and the probability of being male given that you're four is nine over 16. Okay, what about the probability of being four given that you're male? Let's look at all the males. The probability of being four, given that you're male, is nine over 51, which is three over 17. 
Okay, we did all of these using the table and our common sense. Let's do a little proof to finish up. Let's use this formula, the two formulas that we have, right? Notice this is the formula for dependent events. All I've done here is rearrange it so that probability of B given A is by itself over here. So let's take what we know. We know that four given male is three over 17, right? So let's look and see if we can use, let's call event B the probability of being four and the probability, we'll call event A being male. So let's write this out. If I'm gonna write this out, it's gonna be probability of male and four divided by the probability of male. Okay, so let's see, we know that this should be equal to three over 17. Let's see if in fact that's right. Is three over 17 equal to, well, let's look at the probability of male and four. Probability of male and four is one tenth. And the probability of being male is 17 over 30. That should equal three over 17. Well, let's see, does it? Three over 17, does that equal 1 tenth divided by 17 over 30? Well, let's flip this. Let's now make it 30 over 17 and let's multiply. Well, does anyone see how I can reduce? I can make that a one and that a three, and look, it's three over 17, right? So we just proved it using our dependent events. Okay, last one, guys. Let's call this event A and this event B, right? I'm just mapping it directly on. So what we wanna do if we do female and three, the probability of being three, given that you're female, times the probability of female. Well, the probability of female in three, let's check that out. The probability of female in three is four over 45, right there. So we wanna know, can we set up a true equation here? The probability of three given that you're female is eight over 39, and the probability of female is 13 over 30. Okay, so let's reduce this. Well, I can reduce the 13 and the 39, and I can reduce this like that. And look what we get, guys. Four over 45. Okay. That is an amazing beauty of math moment to end on. Sorry this one was a little long. The next one's gonna be super short, so that's compensation. Anyway, I'll see you guys for Pascal's Triangle.